Hey, what is going on, YouTube? Hey, hey, Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back in the Christopher O. Colombo, the tanky beast of an Italian battleship at Legendary Tier. I'm really enjoying this ship, guys. And as you guys know, in my first look video, we ran a secondary slash brawler slash survival build. And a few people, you know, granted, and <laughs> sometimes I just look at my comments and I'm fearful for the world, but a few people said that they're going to be running a full accuracy build on this ship. And in order not to be an, you know, a complete hypocrite, I am trying to test out a few of these builds. Now that being said, I have so many things going on that guys, there is not enough time on earth to do all of the obnoxious stuff that you guys have suggested in the comments. But in this video, we are running an accuracy build Columbo, and we'll get to kind of the finishing, you know, which build I think is best at the end, but this game, it is fantastic from start to finish. It's fantastic in the start, number one, for a few reasons. Let's point out just a teaching moment here. Why are we spotted? It can't possibly be the ships at sea, but we're going to ping right the square, the square that exactly pops up with the destroyer in it, and at the same time, we're going to take a shot at the destroyer. So, the teachable moment in this game is to know where you're probably spotted from in a battleship, and also take those shots. It's almost 7,000 damage off of that Cobber Vosk, you know, a nicely led shot there. The second part of this video is don't be like my team in this video. The Aguirre left our flank from C and goes to the middle, and you will see here very shortly, you can probably already see it if you're paying attention to the mini-map, that the two battleships uh, from the middle are going to come to this side. Guys, just stay on the side you spot on. And also in this video, you're going to learn why you should never sail into the cap in a Mino in the first of it. <laughs> 12 seconds of the game. Good night. Thanks for playing. We appreciate the damage. A full health death strike or a near full health death strike on a Mino is just something I will never, never get tired of, especially when Mino players tend to play rather recklessly. The Mino can be a ship that will absolutely rip you apart if positioned correctly, but it looks like this guy got tired of his smoke screen and ran right through it. Now I know a few of you only watch the first three minutes or don't even watch the video at all sometimes and base 80% of your assumptions off of either the potential clickbait title or the opening statements which are usually, you know, said or, you know, concocted to draw you guys into the video. And if that is you, don't be fooled in thinking that the accuracy build Columbo is the absolute best thing since light spread. Is it slightly more accurate? Yes. But there are points in this game, which we will talk about later, where I really think that having secondaries and brawling, you know, capabilities is just far more important. Yes, you can sit back and snipe, but that is not what this ship is made for. Uh, I have gotten salvos, you know, rather similar in, in a non-accuracy build. So, if you want to waste all of your commander inspirations and time putting, you know, full accuracy on this ship, go ahead and be my guest. And here's a perfect example of, you know, something that we don't really think about too often, at least, you know, I know a lot of the player base doesn't, is we got a decent chunk on that uh, Schlieffen there at 18 kilometers. And of course, you know, half of the shells hit the island there, but that salvo looked fairly accurate leaving, the, you know, the ship, all 16 guns, until half of those shells hit the island. Accuracy by, by volume is why this ship, you guys might think it is accurate. It has 16 guns. 16 shells can land inside of that dispersion ellipse, and that is why a lot of people think that this ship is overly accurate. It's no more accurate than the Veneto or the Latorio, but you have much, you know, at least four more shells to fill in the gaps from, you know, the missing, you know, complete accuracy. You compare that to something like the Georgia or the Champagne, which are far more accurate ships in reality, and this ship appears more accurate because you have <laughs> twice as many, if not 2.5 times the amount of guns. But regardless of your beliefs of RNG and accuracy, we have moved into the sea cap here and we are going to push. That is what the Italians excel at. You have that slight turtleback armor, you have the secondaries, and of course, the rolling smoke screen. Also recently buffed was the concealment range, or the, the smoke firing penalty of the Italians, which I believe is 10.9, I'm not 100% sure on that, and of course, my warship experts are going to confirm that, but I believe it is 10.9, which is actually rather close. I do find it funny when a lot of destroyer players set a smoke screen right off the rip for my battleship, and it ends up being useless because, you know, my smoke firing penalty is like 15 kilometers in most other battleships. 
Here is a great example of this you know, increased accuracy. However, I did not lead this shot correctly. The Yamato stopped. I thought he was going full speed ahead. We get a nice chunk on the kind of the front of the ship there, potentially around the cheek, uh, although you're not really accessing the cheek, and that is when we decide this would be a perfect time for our rolling smoke. We have access to multiple broadsides. If we're taking note of battle strategy, the enemy team did an absolutely terrible job of supporting their destroyers. We saw the Kaba ahead early on. We took a shot at him, and all of these battleships sat in the back, and they're going to pay the price for it. Uh, these, you know, potentially these are the types of players that rush to the forums and blame X, Y, and Z instead of moving their battleship forward. But if you notice there, we got a much better shot on that Yamato and still only hit one Citadel. Now, we did hit a, a ch potentially a chunk more shells of, you know, 12, I think it was. The screen's a little pixelated here. But here is why I will never, you know, tr you know put much into an accuracy build Columbo. 16 shells at 13 kilometers with a flat broadside Awami with a rather large Citadel and what, 8 hits there for 11,000 damage. So, again, it's RNG, it's bot protection, whatever you want to label it as. I think that's funny that some people still believe in that stuff. They don't give Wargaming enough credit to code their game correctly, except when, you know, a player sails broadside and then it's bot protection. It sure as heck feels that way sometimes, because here we have another shot at this broadside Awami when he gets our turret in return. And what do we get? 11,000 damage once again. So it looks like he bought that Awami and Wargaming said, we're going to protect you, son. We're going to protect you, sonny boy. And here is the part of the game where I wish I had my brawling build. I should have just turned left at this point, even before this island, and just pressed straight ahead. My team has such a massive advantage, and this, the Kaba is actually on the right side here, or another destroyer when we get hit for a torpedo. I think it might have been a gearing or something, because those probably weren't Kaba torps. But regardless, we get hit by a torpedo while our turret was out. So we only have one back turret because that turret was out. And this is just a perfect example of RNG. Two 16-gun salvos and one 4-gun salvo that gets more damage in one citadel. So guys, just keep playing the game, try to position yourself well, and when the match just doesn't go your way, just, just move on to the next one. Trust me, I know it can be insanely frustrating you put in maximal effort only to have that blueberry in the newest, you know, premium ship sail straight in and die and do absolutely nothing for your team. But you just move on to the next one and try and get a better game, such as we did in this one. And that is the high caliber, 169,000 damage. Nice. Um, but anyway, back to the builds. I At this point in the game, like we said earlier, I should have just pushed ahead forward, and we would have been in secondary range almost at this point for most of these ships. On top of that, we would have had one more heal, and I, you, know, you can play with the reloads depending on which build you're running, but you... Accuracy by, you know, total number of shells is just far more important than an accuracy build overall. I know some people are going to argue till they're blue in the face, but the results just don't speak for themselves. We've had so many good games in this ship, and it's also what the ship is meant for. Yes, you can snipe in, the, you know, the Kerfurst or the Schlieffen or, you know, the Columbo here, but with the way that our commanders are set up, it is just much more beneficial to run a brawler you know, a mixed or full brawler build. Again, play the game however you wish. Um, and at this point, again, I'm, I'm worried about this destroyer, so I'm not, you know, aggressively pushing ahead, which is just a mistake. I should be just pushing straight ahead, angling to potentially the other ships, um, mainly because of one reason, and that is the points. I was not paying attention to the points in this game. We've been triple capped for so long uh, that, that we're, we've got these guys eightfold on, on points here, despite, you know, we do have a slight ship advantage, but there's so much, look at all that damage left on the board there, what, 60k from that Yamato, 50 from that Kerfurst, that Giuseppe on that side was nearly full health, and then there was another Schlieffen, which had a large chunk of damage, but we do end up finishing off that Yamato, which ticks the points only worse, <laughs> in terms of, of winning, you know, we wanted, it's those, it's always those games when you're doing really well, and you're like, no, why did we caps? <laughs> it's only when your team is doing well that you, you know, you yell at them for doing the right thing. But here, a few battleships pop up. I'm looking for the best available broadside, and I should have just taken a shot because the game is now over. So, GG's to our team, except for our teammates who switch flanks there, stay on the side you spawn on. I will always, except for very limited circumstances, advocate for that. But you can see our scores. We got a nice XP total there, 184,000 with probably 200,000 damage left on the board. 
uh, and a 2781 XP total. Confederate High Caliber Dev Strike First Blood, and there is a build Azure Lane Latorio, which is essentially a pay to win build. So it is just much better to run the Brawler build, unless you know you you want to get out the wallet there. But here it is: Flammable Cannoneer, Crisscross Marksmanship, and uh, what is this? Uh, reaching out, yeah, Reaching out XXL with Sharnhorst, and then we have Reload. You could argue that Cunningham would have made. A slight difference in one of those salvos, and if, you know, that's your fancy, be my guest. Um, I'm going to enjoy the ship how it's meant to be played. You guys can enjoy it regardless. But there's your reload time and everything, and that is an accuracy build Columbo. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's still effective, you know, even if you you have it on there, if you get a bunch of broadsides and, and mino players to sail in. But I just think the ship is far more effective with a secondary build. And that's the video. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, we'll be back on the videos and streams. Love you guys. AA run out. Peace.